Style transfer is really powerful and it works like magic. Hello, my friends. How are you doing today? I'm going to show you something. I found this function inside of free pick where you can upload any kind of photo and it makes variations of that, which is really cool. But I thought to myself, can I build that function on my own? And yes, I can. So I'm going to show you today how to do that in Conf UI. So let's look first at the free pick page. So first of all, what you can do here is you upload up here on the left side, the image, any kind of photo, it will generate here a prompt for you. You can also change that prompt if you want to. It also highlights some stuff that you can click on and then select different variations. That's a pretty cool function. Like instead of fellow deer, you can select moose, elk or caribou. And then down here, you can select from different kinds of styles if you want to. And you can select how big the variation is going to be. Is it subtle? Is it vivid or is it wild? And then simply click on the reimagine button. And as you can see here, that works really well. That is really cool. As a free user, you can generate 20 images. And as a paid user, you can generate as many images as you want. This actually has an endless stream. So while I'm scrolling down, this is creating new variations of that image, which is pretty wild. I don't even have to click the reimagine button after I first clicked it. But of course, let's look at ConfUI. By the way, of course, my Patreon supporters get this workflow as a download so you can follow my video directly. My Patreon reward also includes a longer video where I go more into detail about how to use this workflow. I want to, of course, show you everything I do here in this video. So first of all, we're going to load the checkpoint, of course. And then over here, we are going to render the image. Now here, you can see there is nothing in my clip text and code, which is the prompt it says so in brackets. Now the way I'm doing this is you can right click on any kind of node and then down here you can see that you can convert for example text to widget which means widget would be a function inside of the node so it will convert it back to this kind of text input. However, if I would want to have this changed into an input here on the left side, I right click and I select convert text to input. So that would, of course, give me then an input. And this is, of course, what I need because I want to interrogate the image to get a prompt from what is seen in the image. Down here, we have a string function. I'm coming to that in a second. Here we have the K sampler and the VAE decoder that's, of course, generating the image. Now here, when we look at the string function, you can see I have two inputs. Again, I generated that with the right click and then convert it into an input. And then I have a text box that at the moment I don't really need. So this is empty. Here on A, I input a custom text that I can write. And then on B, I input the interrogation text from the image. So how do we create the interrogation text? First of all, we're going to load an image. I have the note over here, so it is right next to the output. So we have good comparison for that. This is then going over here into that section I created for you. Now here, first of all, we have a resize. Important part here, you can select if this is resized based on the width or the height. So if it is a landscape image, you want to go with the height. And if it is a portrait image, you want to go with the width because it is longer than it is wide. And here I set a size of 864, which is a good size because it's smaller than the SDXL size. So the long side is probably going to be locked bigger. So the long size is probably going to be bigger than the SDXL size. Then after we have resized the image, so it's smaller and easier to handle, we are going to go into the VD14 tagger. Up here, you can see from what kind of note pack this is coming from. Now here, I just let the settings as they are, but if you want to, you can play around with them. Also, we have here exclude text, so you can write in here things you don't want to have in here. I have here a show text note. You don't necessarily need that. For me, it's just like a preview of what the text is giving me. Actually, you see the same thing down here. I use that during building and it's kind of nice because you can move it over to the output area so you see the text that is generated and have a little bit of an overview. I'm going to explain to you why that is necessary in a second. So here we encode the image into a latent. Of course we do. And then we need to set this into the K sampler because we want to use a little bit of the image as an input so it looks similar to that. Now, 
I added two things that helped me generate a similar image that we have down here. As you can see, one of them is ControlNet and the other one is the IP adapter. ControlNet, I'm using just a tiny little itsy bitsy bit, but you can put more of that in here with the strength and also with the end percentage, which means how much or how long of the render steps is this actually going to be used. And here I'm using ControlNet Depth XDXL1 and then down there ControlNet Preprocessor for Depth SDXL with 1024 as a resolution. And then also over here we have the IP adapter. Now here's the important thing. I'm setting my weight type. Let's scroll in here to style transfer SDXL only. So it doesn't work for 1.5 models. Style transfer. It doesn't take the rest. It doesn't take the likeness. It doesn't take the position or the character in the image. It just transfers the style. This is exactly what we want because I want to have image variations that look different from the original, but have the style in there. Again, you can set the weight here if you want to. And of course, down here, you have the IP adapter unified loader. In this case, I'm setting mine to plus, which is high strength. So as you can see, both of them go into the case sampler. The control net is applied to our positive and negative prompt and the IP adapter is applied to the model. Now over here we have the output and this is the output input area. Now this is also a benefit of ComViewI because I can put all of the nodes I require for working after I build it together in one area. I often do that because it makes working a lot easier. Here I included, first of all, the text box for my custom text prompt. Here in this case, I write professional photo raw. And then also I added here a color correct note where I can do additional adjustments like the temperature, hue, brightness, contrast, saturation, gamma, because sometimes it doesn't get exactly the thing I want. So I have here my manual adjustment, which is just a simple image adjustment where, for example, I can lower the temperature of that image a little bit. And as you can see down here, we have the input, we have the output. Let's come back to the note we have down here with the show text. So I can simply pull that down here and then I have a little bit more control over that. So I can see when I load an image here that I know what kind of text the VD14 interrogator is creating. And then also I can see the output here. Every time I click on there, I get a different kind of their image, but you can see the style is the same. And of course, if you don't want to have the same style, you can still turn off the IP adapter. You do that by right clicking on it and then bypassing this. So this is not being used. And here you can see some variations of these images. And the cool thing here is, of course, you can set it as a winter landscape or you can turn a man into a woman or change the ethnicity, things like that, and create really amazing output by the inspirations of the input images. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. I think that's pretty amazing and powerful and you can do even more with that. This is just the basic workflow that you can expand in multiple ways to create really amazing things with it. Thanks for watching my video. Leave a like if you enjoyed it and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.